Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In this video, we're going to be introducing the concept of the mole, that is, the chemist's counting unit, or the counting unit of chemistry. Okay, so so far that we've looked at in this unit, this idea that um, that we can use the concept of counting by weighing as a way for us to um, to measure out a certain number of particles of any given substance, element or compound. And, you know, because we recognise that the particles that we're dealing with are incredibly small, so we can't weigh out one particle, but that we want to be still be able to measure out a specific number of particles. And so, um, but what we need, what we've needed to be able to kind of factor in is this idea that different elements, atoms of different elements, weigh different amounts. So that's part of what we were looking at before, looking at this idea of, okay, well, if you could take a a particle of, of hydrogen and a particle of oxygen, and then by careful you know measurement of mass that you could say, all right, well, we can give hydrogen a, a relative mass of one, and then we can give oxygen a relative mass of sixteen. So therefore, saying that oxygen is sixteen times heavier than hydrogen. Okay. And so what we can what we can say then is all right all right you know this is so this is our relative mass and then what chemists like Dalton went through and did was to actually by looking at careful kind of measurements of mass in compounds to be able to then come up with relative masses for all the different elements that were known about at the time and to say all right well if hydrogen's the lightest element then all of them are some multiple of you know heavier than hydrogen is okay and so <clears throat> but what we we still we're still kind of stuck with the same sort of problem of recognizing, right, well, how do we know when we have measured out a specific number of particles? Okay, and, and therefore, you know, how many are we dealing with here? Um, and so what chemists did was they introduced this concept of the mole as the counting unit of chemistry. Okay, so I use this phrase counting unit quite deliberately, as opposed to a unit of measurement. Okay, because, you know, we use counting units all the time. Um, we talk about a dozen, you know, referring to 12 things. We talk about a pair, referring to two things. You know, maybe you might be talking about a trio of things, referring to three things. Uh, when we're thinking about paper, for example, um, we talk about it being um, a ream of paper, which represents 500 sheets. Each of these sorts of things is a counting unit. You know, you say, oh, I want a dozen eggs, or I want a half dozen eggs, or I want two dozen eggs. You know, I want, um, you know, two pairs of slippers. I want, you know, a trio or, you know, of, of this or that. Okay? Um, <clears throat> these are all counting units. They represent a certain number of things, a certain number of items. And so, the, what we say is that the mole represents a certain amount of matter. That is, it, it's Latin for lump of stuff. We used the, when we looked at the term molecule, we talked about in terms of little lump of stuff. This is the big version, the lump of stuff. Okay, so it represents a standard number of particles. Okay, so when the first concept was first introduced, then they said, all right, so it, the, the mole refers to the number of particles in 1.0 grams of hydrogen. Okay, because they said, all right, well, let's say... You know, if one, you know, if hydro a hydrogen atom has a relative mass of one, then let's just kind of scale it up and say, if we could measure out a hyd you know, a sample of hydrogen and one gram, that that would be a particular number of particles, and say, well, let's let's call that number of particles the mole, a mole of particles, and so what that then means is that we can say, well, if one hydrogen atom, um, sorry, if one oxygen atom, atom is 16 times uh, one hydrogen atom, okay, then we can, we can use the same kind of proportion and scale it up and say one mole of oxygen, now the, the, the language here is a little bit clumsy, but just to kind of draw the parallel here, one mole of oxygen is going to be 16 times one mole of hydrogen because the relative mass is the same, as far as we know that every one of those oxygen particles is 16 times heavier than the hydrogen one, so one mole of particles will have the same relationship. 
So that means that if one gram of hydrogen represents one mole, then 16 grams of oxygen represents a mole of oxygen. And so all of a sudden, that what we do, <clears throat> we actually now have, in, in, in a way that, you know, with an elegance that might be struggle to appreciate at this point, is that the one mole represents the elements, or is represented by the elements relative atomic mass measured in grams. Okay, so that's what how we define the mole of any substance. Now the great thing is that because the mole is a counting unit, that we know that this will be the same number of particles for any element, any substance. It works for compounds as well, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Is this idea that um, because we're representing an, an, a number of particles, it's like saying, okay, well, I could <clears throat> I could go to the fruit shop and I could get ten grapes, okay, and then I, and at the fruit shop I could also get ten oranges, I could get ten dates. I could get 10 watermelons, I could get 10 bananas, okay? Now, each of those sets of 10 of that item will have a different mass. The 10 watermelons in particular is going to break someone's back for sure, um, especially compared with 10 grapes, for example. Um, but now the reality is that I still have 10 of each item. So in my counting unit, I still have a 10 of that thing. And so I have the same number of items of each thing, but I have a different mass. But if I know, okay, that um, a watermelon is 150 times more massive than a grape, then I can say, right, well, I'm going to need 150 times the mass of water, you know, whatever I've got with the grapes in order to have the same number of those things. And so we've taken something which was an abstract kind of level of the particle of this relative atomic mass and now translated it into something that we can measure on a scale as easily as a year seven student could. Okay. So to be able to, you know, we can take that element and we can measure it out in grams and we can be confident knowing that we have the right number of particles. Now, originally chemists didn't know how many particles that was. In the same way that when you did the relative mass activity, you didn't know how many pieces were in the vial, but it didn't matter as long as you knew that they was the same number because then you could compare them. Now, what we know now is the number of particles is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 particles for every one mole. And so when we talk about units of moles as a, as a unit, we, we, do, we say MOL as opposed to the full word of MOLE. So we talk about mole. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles represents one mole of that substance. Okay, so if I had that number of particles of copper atoms, that number of particles of sugar molecules, if I had that number of particles of helium atoms, okay, I still have one mole of that substance. Okay, now, so this number wasn't known until much later, like after the concept of the mole was brought up. Okay, we're able to, to kind of carefully measure using concepts that developed a lot later. Now, this is an immensely large number when you think about this in scientific notation. There are, you know, there are... <clears throat> if we take that decimal place away, you know, we've got 20 zeros that extend after that too. Um, now, there are more, some more significant figures that could come after this. We know it a bit more accurately than that. But this idea being that that is an immensely large number of particles. Okay, but it is something that we know with confidence. Okay, now this is not a number that you need to memorise. Um, it's known as the Avogadro constant, or Avogadro's number. It's given this, this constant is given the symbol of capital M with a lowercase capital A. And so that it represents this number. Now you will always be provided with this number if you need to be able to use it. Okay, um, it will be on the data sheet that you'll be provided with. Okay, but so then that means that we now can say, right, well, I have a set number of particles for every one mole. And I can also look at how I can measure out um, one mole of any substance. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a, a quick practice calculation to round off this video for you um, to show you how we, can, how we can work with this. So saying, all right, if we have a quarter of a mole, 0.25 moles of hydrogen gas, um, how many particles do we have? Okay, so we can use this as a conversion factor, just like we've done with the, we did with density in the past. And we can say is, okay, so um, the number of particles 
and partic so we can no, we'll just say particles of H2 is equal to 0 0.25 moles and then we want the units we want over the units we have which we'll be keeping it this way around 6.022 times 10 to the 23 um, particles for every one mole that's going to cancel out so we get 1.50 times 10 to the 23 okay so it would you know, rounding that to three significant figures. Okay, so we can use this as a conversion factor to work out how many particles we have for every mole of a substance. One mole of any two substances will have exactly the same number of particles, no matter how big or small those particles are relative to one another. Okay, and then in the next video, we're going to go through, flesh out the, the further this concept of how we can measure out by mass one mole of any substance. All right, thanks very much for watching. Um, a quick joke to finish up. So a, a, pho a photon kind of walks into a hotel um, and the, the kind of the, 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 the bellman kind of, or bellhop kind of comes up to him and says, oh, sir, can I take your bags? And it's like, no, no, um, I, I don't have any bags. And it's like, what do you mean you don't have any bags? And he says, no, no, I'm traveling light. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.